Today I'm going to give a short teaching on fasting. What is it all about? What is God's view on this in the light of the grace of God? And what would be a true New Testament way of looking at this? First of all, I want to start out by saying that when we look at God and his perspective towards the world, we cannot look at it outside of Jesus Christ and what God has come to do for us. If we take the concept of sowing, for instance, giving, sowing seed, we find that the word of God is the seed that was sown. And the only seed that can satisfy the purpose of God is the seed that God has sown, which is Jesus, who died and then rose again and brings forth much fruit. So the concept of seed here is definitely that which God does. And then when we look at the Lamb of God, we find that there was in the Old Testament many uh, lambs that was given and many sacrificial lambs, but none of those lambs could satisfy what God had in mind. The only lamb that could satisfy what God had in mind and bring his purpose into fulfillment is the lamb God gave. And we know that John the Baptist announced when Jesus came for baptism and he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So we see here that the only true seed that could be sown is the seed that God has sown. We see the only true Lamb that could be given is the one that God has given. We find the very same with the offering and the sacrifice. Jesus Christ is that which God offered. He is that which God sacrificed and gave for us so that we can have life. So the seed must be the seed God gives. The lamb must be the lamb God gives. The offering must be that which God offers. Even in tithing, when we go and look at tithing, for instance, the Bible says the curse shall be broken over us when we tithe. And we know that uh, the curse is taken off us because of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the meat that God gave to the storehouse so that there can be meat in the house of God. Today we... we um, look at the communion and we see the body and the blood of Jesus and we find meat in the house of God. And the meat that is in the house of God, Jesus clearly said, is his flesh. He says, my flesh is meat indeed. So the only true tithe that could ever be given is God's provision to his house so there can be meat in the house of God and that is the body and the blood of Jesus. So, the only true seed there is, is the seed that God sows. The only true lamb is the lamb that God gives. The only true offering is Jesus Christ, the offering of God, what he offered up for us. The only true tithe is the one that God gives. And then I want to take it further and we talk about fasting today. The only true fast is not how you bow down and pray and worship and seek God for an answer. How you put yourself through a difficult time so that you can hear from God and be heard on high. The only true fast is the fast that God has fasted in giving Jesus Christ. And I would like to read a passage in the Bible as pertaining to that. It says here in Isaiah 58 verse 1. Now oh, let's read from verse 3. It talks about people that were honestly seeking after God. And this is God's reply to them through Isaiah in verse 3. It says, Wherefore have you fasted, say they, this is the people that now are fasting, and you who are God does not see. Wherefore have we afflicted our souls, and you take no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast you find pleasure and exact all your labors. 
This is what God answers here. And then the end of verse 4, to make your voice to be heard on high. So what he's saying is, is you are fasting so that you can basically get power from me so that you can be heard on high and that you can be victorious against your enemies and all those kind of things. Now listen to what he says here. Is, is it such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? You know, you afflict your soul many times when you go without food and suffer and bow down your head as in a bulrush, verse 5 says, and to spread out sackcloth and ashes under yourself. Will you call this a fast and an acceptable day of the Lord? So what he's basically saying is, is if you are basically inflicting suffering on yourself to get God to answer from heaven so that you can be exalted and seen and be blessed and be heard from on high, he says, this is not what God has chosen. You are thinking that a fast is what you need to do in order for God to get, get God moving to do something for you. Now listen to the, what, it, what the fast is that God has chosen. And then we're going to quickly link, link it to Isaiah uh, 61. Now, uh, please excuse me. I might, this message might be about 10 minutes long. It says, is, um, is not this the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness and to undo heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free and that you bro break every yoke? Is it not to deal your bread with the hungry and that you bring the poor that are cast out of the house? when you see them naked and that you cover him and they don't hide yourself from your own flesh or your own nakedness. Jesus was hanging naked upon a cross. Then shall your light break forth as the morning and your health shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. Um, the glory of the Lord shall be your reward. That sounds to me like Jesus and what he has come to do. Isaiah 61 says like this, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort people, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give, give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees and the planting of the Lord. So we find here that Isaiah is basically saying, listen, you are fasting and you are only fasting so that your prayers can be answered and that you can be exalted. But that is not the fast that I've chosen. The fast that I have chosen is to exalt the people and to let the people go free. And then Isaiah 61, he says, this is what I have now come to do. So I want to say to you, the only true fast is not the one where you go without food. The only true fast is the one that God has fasted in Jesus Christ to bring forth deliverance for the captives, the setting free of those that are bound, deliverance for all them that are distressed, to bring the oil of joy, not that he can be hurt, but that the people can be set free. So how do we live in the fasting of God? We are, this is how we do it. We spread the gospel of the fast that God fasted in Jesus Christ in bringing people to freedom. And that is how we partake in the fast of Jesus Christ, by declaring that God loves people, that he sets people free, and that we are his. Glory to God. Know that you are deeply loved by God and enjoy the fast that God has brought to you today. Amen.